Paul Richards, former Labour special advisor, he was a uh, uh, worked in the health uh, cabinet office and communities departments over the years. Uh, good morning to you, Paul. Good morning, Julia. How are you? Very well indeed. Thank you very much. I, mean, I want to ask you just really briefly, but let's not get caught up on this. In terms of the decision by David Lammy suspending some arms exports licences uh, to Israel, that decision, you know how government works, that decision would, of course, been agreed by number 10, would it not? What would have been the motivation for that? Would a lot of it have been placating those on the sort of the left of the party over this issue? Well, there's the overt uh, sort of legal arguments that are being articulated in public, but I think you, you can't divorce that from the behind the scenes politics of it. Some of the rationale for that was being articulated in your previous uh, interview with the Henry Jackson Society because, you know, Labour has got this left wing that is very concerned about Gaza, and we saw that played out in the election in particular, and that's never far from politicians. Mind. So I think you have to see it through those both of those lenses. Yeah, there's, there's, they're, they're definitely kind of deal with domestic politics as well as a, as a foreign affairs, aren't they? There. And let's also talk about. I mean, it's a clearly a massive issue in domestic politics coming up. The October the 30th, in which basically there's two months to go. Uh, the budget. We've been warned it's going to be painful. It's already going mm. to be painful. We know for those pensioners who are on lower incomes, but not the lowest incomes. 10 million pensioners in total losing their winter fuel allowance, 300 pounds uh, a year. But um, you know. A good couple of million of people who are on very low income but aren't actually able to claim the credit. 800,000 who could claim the credit but, but haven't, not surprised. It's got 240 questions you have to answer before you can even get it being means tested. Um, do you think there's a likelihood that Rachel Reeves, the Chancellor, will back down on that? And how damaging has it been for her when you come into office and say, oh, things are terrible, here's a big pay rise for train drivers on 60 grand a year and here's 300 quid being taken away from poorer pensioners? I think the train drivers deserve their pay rise, but that's they? a separate issue. It's not, it's not a choice between them. It I is. Think, uh, it is a MPs, choice. That's what governing is, to choose. And, and MPs are coming back from their summers where they have been bothered in Tesco, they've been badgered in the high street. You know, they, they, Their mailbags are full of people worried about fuel allowance. And, and that, that I think is very much at some people's minds. So I think there is a bubbling pressure um, through the, the, the new, much bigger parliamentary Labour party uh, i think ministers are holding the line but i think there may well need to be some calibration around the threshold you know the point of this is not to punish pensioners the point is to spend money wisely and that, you know there is a strong but wait a minute wait a minute spending money wisely includes keeping poorer pensioners alive and not dying from the cold in the winter, doesn't it? That's well, that, that's why I say the calibration is important. But, I mean, there is an argument for not giving money away uh, to, to billionaires who don't need it. Uh, and also there's an argument for getting pensioners to take out benefits to which they are entitled, which they don't. You know, there's been... Well, you could make them easier as well. ...to get more people to take up as well, because people... You know, often don't quite know what they're entitled to. No, people, no, no, people good. don't know what they're entitled to. Lots of pensioners say that you know it's too difficult for them, or they don't. But again, the 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 questionnaire to get pensioner credit is two hundred and forty questions odd. Yes, I mean there needs to be some simplification of the forms as well. I would say. I mean that's not beyond our wit, is it? You know, government probably is, is to be fair. They can be made better. <laughs> <laughs> but the bigger point is, you know, there is just a massive hole in the economy and we should be giving, you know, why shouldn't Paul McCartney get a winter fuel allowance when he well, doesn't well, need Well, I look, that there is a, you know as well as I do, having worked in government, there's a reason why some benefits are across the board and not means tested, because it's actually cheaper to not do the means testing, because there's a cost to that of doing the means testing. And actually, the pensioners who are getting that have already, you know, when you've got someone who's well off, look, my parents don't need extra help paying their fuel bills either, but no. they paid a lot of tax over the years. They, they've kind of covered their costs on that front. But to make sure that the people who need it get it, the simpler solution would be just to add it to the actual pension. Everyone gets it. Uh, and then the pensioners who've got a load of money, they get taxed on it. Well, if you were running the country, that might be what you did. But, uh, you know, we're inheriting a system that is in existence. And I think this is one way to try and save money, but also get money where it's needed. Yeah, but like but I say, the, there's, pressure, there's, the pressure who do you is building. Save, I mean, no, I'm, no, but who do you save money on? Saving money on poorer pensioners doesn't seem to be... I'm not sure that was what most people who did vote Labour thought Labour would do as one of their first acts of government. 
well, like I say, the pressure's building. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. We're not at budget yet. And I suspect, you know, we'll sort of end where we began on this topic, which is that I suspect well, ministers can look very closely at this and maybe the calibration will, will shift a bit because of that pressure I described earlier. Well, I think I think they'll keep it because they don't, they don't want to save face, but then they'll come up with some rinky-dink thing that ends up costing more in bureaucracy than they actually are handing out because that's what governments end up doing when they make oh, dumb decisions. You cynic. You cynic. Oh, cynic. You. No, I'm just watched it all for a lot of years as, as have you um angela rayner the deputy prime minister also communities housing secretary it's got a million titles um she has refused to rule out possibility of scrapping the single person discount for council tax again you get 25 percent discount if you live alone whether, whatever age you are but again a lot of these people will be elderly people a lot of them elderly widows who live alone want to stay in their home that yes it's worth a lot but you more than they don't they don't need more than one bedroom flat but yes they'd like to stay in the home they shared with their husband and their their family for for, for decades um again another another discount another another tax that could actually end up hitting people who frankly most people don't want to be hit with extra tax rises the point the ministers were making and rachel reeves in particular is that it's going to be a tough budget and the the system and the you know the economy that labor has inherited is in a mess and i think it's going to get worse before it gets better and i, I think that's just an unfortunate thing that we're going to have to deal with over the next year or two before things do get better before there's growth in the economy and um, there are going to have to be some of these tough decisions i mean at least the government is not shying away from it and they're not pretending things are better than they are you know we are getting the unvarnished they're pretending things are worse than they are aren't they i mean no one thought things were good i mean they were the one they were the ones who were accused of lying along with the tories and all the other parties by the institute of fiscal studies ahead of the election just want to ask you one final thing do you expect that the nhs should treat patients differently based on their based on their well, either their position in society uh, or indeed their political views because uh, Jess Phillips, uh, who is a Home Office Minister, she reported last month that, um, that basically she turned up to A&E in Birmingham, where she, which is his local MP, and she claims that she was recognised by a doctor who happened to be Palestinian and basically that she got to the front of the queue in, in an absolute you know, mayhem, sort of late-night situation in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in, A in A&E. And, and she says um, that she thinks she got basically preferential treatment because of her views on Palestine. It may also well, be, she I'm, says, I because she's an MP. Is that ever acceptable? No, absolutely not. I think she uh, she has regretted what she said. It was particularly foolish. I don't believe for a minute, by the way, that the NHS did treat her differently because they, you know, they are very clear that they deliver care at the point of need, based on need, not any other thing like status or income. Um, and the MPs I know absolutely to go to incredible pains often to disguise the fact they're members of parliament when they're going through the editions because they don't want preferential treatment. So I think it was a silly thing to say, and I don't believe that that particular doctor did anything differently than they would otherwise have done, regardless of politics or anything else. She just, so, you know, it could just be a classic example of Jess Phillips thinking it's all about her, as Jess Phillips often does. I think it was a foolish thing to say, and I don't believe it happened in quite the way right. she's describing Paul because Richards. I do believe the NHS delivers care based on need. Thank you. Well, we shall see. Paul Richards, former Labour Special Advisor, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you for that.